So welcome to Codership's Galera Cluster uh, webinar and best practices webinar. Uh, before we go to the actual webinar, let me just say a few words about Codership and Galera Cluster. Galera Cluster was, uh, we, we started to develop Galera Cluster 2007 and the first release of the production version was 2009. So now we have already like seven years of production version in the marketplace and uh, today we have uh, thousands of users in e-commerce and telecom, big uh, users and small users in different market segments. Uh, before uh, developing Galera cluster, our team developed three other MySQL cluster software. So they had a pretty good understanding of the, of the requirements that the customers had, also of the drawbacks of the existing master-slave replication. But it's also based on the academic research uh, about distributed computing and how do we do uh, conflict resolutions, for example. Our product is called Galera Cluster for MySQL. It's open source software, as you might know, and, and our business model is to sell support and consulting. Galera Cluster is included in Ubuntu. It will be included in Debian pretty soon and also in, in, in Red Hat and SUSE. A recent survey from OpenStack showed that 34% uh, of the OpenStack users are using Galera cluster for OpenStack high availability. There are three Galera cluster variants in the marketplace. And uh, we do Galera cluster for MySQL and we give this to uh, uh, MariaDB and Percona, and they merge this, this version to their uh, server var MySQL variants. And uh, out of these, MariaDB is our certified partner, and Percona is not our certified partner. This means that we do bug fixing, new releases of the software, and we plan roadmaps together with MariaDB. But having said that, I would like now to give the microphone to Philip Stoev, who will do actual presentation and the webinar. Philip, the, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Philip Stoev, and I will be hosting uh, the webinar today. The topic is uh, best practices uh, with Galera cluster for DBS and uh, DevOps. Uh, this webinar assumes some, fam assumes, uh, some familiarity with Galera cluster, but on our website you can find our documentation, you can find the previous webinars that describe the installation procedure. Uh, the agenda for today is I'm going to give a very quick overview of the Galera cluster and the features that uh, the product has. And uh, then uh, we are going to discuss uh, how to best monitor the cluster and how to detect uh, certain uh, kinds of bottlenecks uh, that, are, uh, that can happen with Galera. Then we are going to discuss uh, backup strategies. And uh, finally, we are going to discuss how to select the optimal state snapshot transfer method. Uh, this webinar is part of a series of webinars, so uh, we welcome uh, your feedback as to what other topics uh, may be of interest to you uh, in the future. And uh, we will hope to cover them in future webinars. So first, uh, a very quick uh, overview of Galera cluster. It is synchronous multi-master replication solution for my C. Also at commit time. And uh, essentially, all the nodes in the cluster are equal, and uh, they move forward uh, together. Uh, this uh, design, in turn, prevents uh, the phenomenon of stale slaves. So there is no way 
a node uh, can fall far behind the other nodes when replicating. It is multi-master in a sense that you can uh, issue transactions uh, to any node, and in case conflicting transactions are issued on multiple nodes at once, Galera will detect the situation and will make sure that the database state stays consistent and it will prevent unsafe uh, updates to the database, even if they are issued on multiple nodes. It is based on replication. Uh, it is not a sharding solution, uh, so a copy of the entire data set is present on all nodes, and each node is able to answer, for example, any select query against the database. And uh, when you add new nodes, they will automatically join the cluster and uh, will receive uh, a snapshot of the entire database uh, using an internal mechanism. And uh, as Zachary mentioned, it is based on Oracle MySQL Community Edition. We provide uh, packages for 5.5, 5.6, and uh, 5.7 uh, is coming up. And uh, the underlying uh, storage uh, engine uh, for Galera cluster is InnoDB, which means that all uh, tuning advice, all configuration uh, advice uh, that you can get uh, for InnoDB applies uh, to Galera as well. The product has uh, a few more interesting features that are worth mentioning. It is able to recover from node failures within seconds, meaning that if a node uh, becomes unavailable for some reason, this situation will be detected very quickly by the rest of the cluster. This node will be dropped out, and the re remaining nodes will continue to process transactions. The product has very strong data consistency protections. It prevents you from reading uh, stale or incorrect data, and it prevents you from modifying uh, your data in an unsafe way. As mentioned previously, for example, modifying the same uh, record from two different nodes uh, is, uh, is prevented. And Galera Cluster also has extensive features for cloud and wide area network support, meaning that you can have nodes in your cluster located in different data centers different countries, different continents, and uh, you can also have a um, Galera cluster on the cloud uh, or on any cloud provider, and you can actually have um, clusters that uh, use multiple cloud providers if you think uh, this is uh, needed for, for example, for reliability reasons. Our first topic for today is uh, monitoring Galera cluster. So uh, there are some general principles that apply to uh, the way you monitor uh, Galera's operation. Uh, first of all, it is first and foremost uh, uses MySQL and InnoDB, meaning that uh, your existing tools for monitoring uh, or uh, tuning uh, MySQL or InnoDB will still apply. For example, the slow query log is still useful or any other tool that you may uh, be using uh, with MySQL. And uh, InnoDB still uh, processes all those transactions, all those writes, and therefore uh, InnoDB tuning and InnoDB performance has uh, a big impact on the performance of the entire cluster. Uh, in this webinar, we are not going to discuss uh, InnoDB monitoring and uh, tuning in particular. Instead, we will focus on uh, stuff uh, that is uh, specific to Galera cluster rather than in ODB. Galera has a lot of, uh, exports a lot of matrix via the show global status uh, command. Uh, and uh, it is important to know that some of those counters, uh, some of those metrics are counters or averages. And uh, they accumulate over time, so if you want to have fresh uh, data, you should run flush status. Otherwise, uh, the data in those counters applies to the entire period from the time the, the node was started, which may have been quite a long time in the past. Uh, when it comes to events, Galera reports everything uh, in the MySQL server error log. 
So it is a good idea to make sure that those error logs are properly recorded and that the log rotation scripts are operating to your satisfaction. But sometimes uh, we see cases where the error logs uh, are not recorded or where they have been rotated uh, too fast. So it is not possible to see what has happened on the cluster uh, some time ago. And finally, uh, since each Galera node is a separate, separate MySQL instance, it makes sense to monitor each uh, instance separately in your monitoring tool or your monitoring script. Uh, even though it is possible to get some information about the health of the entire cluster from a single node, a much better picture is obtained if you monitor all of your nodes uh, separately. One thing that is important to, to mention is that Galera is very reliant on the network uh, to replicate to the transactions. And uh, it is affected by any issues uh, in the underlying network by uh, packet loss by very high round trip times or very low bandwidth. Those issues affect uh, the performance of Galera uh, in a way that, uh, for example, would not happen with traditional synchronous replication. Because with Galera, each transaction needs to be replicated right away. Uh, network issues uh, will, become uh, will become immediately visible uh, in terms of uh, transaction performance. So if uh, your uh, network environment is anything but uh, the most simple one, we recommend that uh, you monitor uh, the health of your network using some uh, third party tool that will give you at least uh, round trip times, hopefully some bandwidth graphs. This is especially important if, if your nodes are located in different uh, data centers or even in uh, different racks because we have seen issues uh, where uh, the network was misbehaving and it was difficult to figure out if it was a Galera problem or a network problem. Even though the nodes were not located uh, many miles apart, there were still uh, routing uh, switches involved and uh, other network equipment. So uh, monitoring, so network uh, monitoring uh, would be very helpful to figure out what is going on in your network or Galera cluster. Another thing that's important to note is that uh, Galera uh, as a cluster is as slow as uh, the slowest network link between uh, any two nodes. And therefore it is important to monitor the quality of uh, each network link separately. Uh, we have seen uh, environments where uh, there are multiple data centers and some of them have uh, good uh, network uh, connectivity but others uh, not so much and uh, Galera is uh, usually limited by the speed of the slowest network and or by the quality of the the worst network in the cluster. So uh, our first set of uh, status variables uh, that uh, we should uh, mention and that should be monitored is uh, they come from show global status and they relate to the overall health of the cluster and the specific node where they were run. Uh, so first we have recep ready. Uh, the value of on indicates that this node is uh, connected to the rest of the nodes in the cluster and is able to replicate transactions. The second variable name, recep cluster status, uh, indicates uh, that the node is part of what is called the primary component. And by primary component, uh, we mean the a cluster that is uh, connected, all the nodes that are connected to each other and are able to replicate. If, for example, a node becomes separated from the rest by a network partition, then its uh, cluster status will change to non-primary. This indicates that this node uh, is unable to replicate transactions uh, to the other peers. The third uh, status variable, recep local state comment, should have a value synced. If it doesn't, so this means that the node is performing some other job. It is either joining the cluster right now, 
or it is providing a state snapshot transfer for some other node. Uh, if uh, you have nodes uh, joining and leaving the cluster, uh, those other states are natural and they're transient and eventually the node will get back to a state of sync, but it is still a very good idea to monitor this state in case uh, for some reason the node is unable to transition to the state of sync. And finally, uh, we have reset cluster size, which gives you the size of your cluster in terms of number of nodes, uh, which includes also any arbitrator nodes that you may have. It is important to monitor this because uh, if a node is shut down cleanly from a viewpoint of Galera, then Galera will consider this to be a natural situation and uh, the, the other nodes will continue to run, which may be not what you expect. For example, if you have a five node cluster, uh, you may expect that all the five nodes will be operational at all times, but uh, sometimes uh, one of the nodes will shut down naturally and the remaining nodes will continue to run. Uh, this uh, redu reduction in the number of nodes will be reflected in this uh, cluster size variable. So. Uh, uh, it should be monitored in case uh, this reduction in the number of nodes is actually not something that you expected. Then we have a set of uh, variables that are important to monitor in order to detect the bottlenecks in the performance of the cluster. Uh, so first uh, we have uh, the all important flow control post variable. Uh, it is a variable that uh, takes a value from 0 to 1 and indicates the percentage of time where the cluster was throttled because it had to wait for its slowest node to catch up with the rest of the cluster. With Galera, as uh, mentioned previously, the performance of the entire cluster is limited by the performance of the slowest node. And if a particular node is unable to keep up with the, with the transaction load, it will request that the entire cluster suspends uh, processing for a fraction of a second until it is able to catch up. Every time this happens, it is reflected in this ratio. Uh, so uh, you should uh, make sure that uh, this does not go beyond 10 or 20 percent. If you, if this value is more than uh, 0.2, this indicates uh, that the cluster is, uh, is frequently throttled, is frequently stopped waiting for the slowest node. Which brings us to the next uh, status variable, which is uh, reset flow control sent. This indicates uh, how many times this particular node that we are running this uh, show command on has requested that uh, the rest of the cluster uh, stops for a bit and waits for it. So if you collect those uh, very, uh, values from all your nodes, the node that has uh, requested such uh, stoppages most frequently is the slowest node in the cluster and it is the machine that you need to check and attend to. Idea with, with Galera, uh, you should be using uh, identical nodes in terms of hardware and software so that uh, there is no situation where one of the nodes is consistently uh, preventing the cluster from reaching its full performance. The other two uh, status variables in this table are related to the number of transactions that Galera had to abort because they were in conflict with each other. As mentioned previously, Galera detects situations where two transactions attempt to update the same role aborts one of those transactions. Uh, you should be looking at the, those two counters together as a sum. So in this particular case, you have uh, 77 plus 24 transactions uh, that were uh, that could not complete and uh, an error was returned to the client. So depending on your application, uh, you should decide what uh, number of such failures is tolerable. Uh, 
for some applications uh, they some applications are not really prepared to, to handle this type of error so what they usually do is uh, propagate it all the way to the client and the client gets an error message this is uh, this is not uh, usually something that uh, that uh, you desire so it is important to uh, to keep an eye on those uh, on the sum of those two counters in case uh, you are seeing uh, too many such aborted transactions, there are two things that you can try. If uh, your application uses auto commit, in other words, if it does not use uh, full formed multi statement transactions but only single statement uh, updates, uh, then you can try increasing this uh, recipe every try auto commit uh, variable. What happens with Galera is that uh, Galera attempts to retry those auto commit transactions. In case they fail, it attempts to retry them in order to make them succeed, in order to avoid returning an error to the application. By default, each transaction is retried only once, but by setting recipe uh, retry auto commit to say two or three, you uh, increase the number of times uh, those uh, trans uh, queries are retried and uh, increase the chance of them uh, being able to pass through eventually. Uh, this only applies for, uh, for single statement uh, transactions. The other option is uh, to move all the queries that uh, conflict with each other, all queries that operate on the same row if you have a hot table or a hot row in that table, moving all those uh, queries so that they run only on a one node in the cluster will automatically prevent the occurrence of such conflicts. So uh, you can configure your proxy server, for example, to split the workload intelligently uh, so that uh, conflicting queries are all always set always sent to just one of your nodes based on, for example, the name of the table name that is used in the query. Or uh, the application itself can uh, can split uh, those queries and send them to uh, in a, a separate connection to, to just one node. Uh, we also kept uh, some useful information in the show process list. Uh, with uh, Galera, each transaction is replicated to the other nodes at commit time. Uh, that is why transactions that are currently in the process of being replicated will show in the process list with the state of query end. This state indicates that uh, Galera is now uh, attempting to replicate the transaction. Uh, so uh, transactions that, uh, that stay for a long time in this state uh, indicates that uh, Galera has trouble replicating them. Usually it is a bandwidth limitation of some sort or, uh, or some other bottleneck and uh, this is something that uh, will show up in the slow query log for example if you configure it. If you have uh, say a one uh, megabyte transaction but you're trying to run your cluster over uh, one megabit uh, lines, uh, then uh, you can expect that uh, each transaction will take several seconds just uh, to replicate because of the network, uh, network delay. So by keeping eye on your process list and on uh, how many queries are in this state and for how long they have been running, you can figure out uh, whether uh, Galera has any trouble replicating those transactions in time. The next topic uh, for this uh, webinar is backups. Uh, Galera has a slightly different behavior uh, when it comes to backups as compared to traditional MySQL. So it is important to, to note the differences. First of all, uh, the fact that you have uh, multiple nodes in your cluster and multiple copies in, of your data does not remove the need to have backups because backups also can in case of human error, in case of a very catastrophic failure of uh, all the machines in case they are located together and in other such cases. Since uh, all Galera nodes have 
the same information, it is sufficient to back up just one node. And there is no need to back up the binary log files because Galera does not use them. Uh, you can back them up in case you want to do, for example, point uh, in time recovery and other such things, but strictly speaking, Galera does not need those files. And finally, uh, it is very strongly recommended to practice your restore operation. As we will see later, there are some uh, specifics about the way uh, you restore uh, from backup when it comes to Galera, and given that uh, you would usually restore, uh, initiate a restore in a time of stress. It is uh, a very wise idea to practice uh, this uh, beforehand. Uh, furthermore, with Galera, some of those operations uh, will take time. So when you practice them, you also have the opportunity to find how long uh, your restore will take and uh, figure out whether this is uh, sufficient for you. There are some performance considerations when uh, when taking a backup. If uh, if you're using uh, extra backup uh, or uh, to to backup your InnoDB uh, files, then you can expect that uh, the node that you're taking the backup from will be slowed down because of the extra I/O that takes place uh, while writing the backup files. And with Galera. As we mentioned previously, if one node is slowed down uh, sufficiently to not be able to keep up with the rest of the cluster, it will automatically request the other nodes to throttle. So you would want to, uh, to make sure that uh, performance of the system remains acceptable while you take your backup. The other option, as we will see later, is to take a node entirely out of the cluster and do your backup on it. In this case, you're now running with a smaller number of nodes, which again affects uh, both the quorum calculations of Galera itself, but also the load on each uh, node that remains. For MySQL dump backups, uh, a lock may be taken on the entire uh, node, which in turn means that the entire cluster uh, will be locked if you have not taken this particular node out of the cluster. Because a node that is locked and is unable to, to replicate, uh, automatically is unable to keep up with the rest of the nodes and uh, will immediately request the uh, throttle of the cluster. If uh, those uh, performance uh, considerations are unacceptable to you, there is one uh, solution which is to set up an asynchronous slave to a Galera cluster and use it to take backups. So Galera the Galera cluster as a whole can serve as a master in uh, an asynchronous slave setup. And since the asynchronous slave is not part of the cluster, uh, you can use it for any purpose that you wish. You can take backups from it, uh, you can run queries, uh, select queries on it, uh, or whatever, and this will not uh, affect uh, the operation of the main cluster. The only important thing is not to let uh, this node fall far behind uh, the, the actual cluster, because uh, in this case you're using a synchronous replication, and Galera will, is not there to make sure that this node is 100% uh, uh, up uh, with the other ones. A few notes about extra backup, this being the most popular tool to take backups. It is non-blocking, but still, as we mentioned before, there is performance impact. And a short lock is still taken at some point while the backup runs. There is an option to, uh, to this uh, tool called uh, dash dash galera info, which records the precise position when the backup was taken uh, when it comes to Galera, this position is recorded in a file that is part of the backup, and it is important to have this file as we will see later. So, uh, 
As we mentioned previously, if you are running your backup procedure on your running cluster, there is this uh, possibility that the entire cluster's performance will suffer. So there is the ability to run backup with a dedicated node, meaning that uh, each time before you take the backup, you will take the uh, node temporarily out of the cluster and then uh, then uh, take your backup while the node is not part of the cluster and then uh, once the backup is done uh, you can restore the node to its membership in the cluster. The important thing here is that this node should not accept any rights transactions while this operation is, uh, is taking place because uh, during this time this node is not running uh, Galera replication, it is not part of the cluster so any transactions that uh, you write to it at this point will not be replicated. So it is if you are using this uh, this procedure, make sure that this node is removed from your load balancer. That all existing sessions are disconnected, all the existing clients are kicked out. And once you have that, you can unload Galera by setting the provider to value of none. And now you have this node that is uh, perfectly stationary. It is not part of the cluster. And uh, now you're free to, to take your backup using any means uh, that you want. And once the backup is done, you restore the value of reset provider. You check that the reset ready variable is back to its value of on. And then you can start uh, running queries again against this node because it has rejoined the rest of the cluster. The, the duration of the backup is important. Uh, uh, there is a setting in the Galera that you will probably know called Gcache size. It is important for this setting to be large enough so that uh, the way you take the node out of, out of the cluster and rejoin it later uh, for the duration of the backup, uh, there is a sufficient GCache size to enable the node to rejoin with IST rather than SST. Uh, we also need to, to talk about restoring those backups, and this is the most critical uh, procedure because it happens under stress, as we mentioned before. So if you have a single node that has been uh, damaged and you need to restore it, uh, you have two options. First is to simply wipe the data directory clean and restart the node. In this case, Galera will consider this uh, as a fresh node and will perform state snapshot transfer and will, this node will receive a complete uh, copy of the entire of the entire data set, which is essentially restoring uh, the data to the node and restoring it uh, back in service. The, the special thing about this method is that uh, if you're using SST, uh, this means you also have the donor node involved. And the donor node will either be blocked or will be slowed down by the fact that it is uh, sending SST. In order to avoid that, if you have a recent backup, uh, you can uh, again wipe the directory clean, restore the data, but then do some uh, little, little bit of magic. So you take the information from this extra backup Galera info file that was created as part of the backup and put it in the file named grsstate.dot. So uh, there are two things to edit in this file, the UUID and the sequence number. So those two pieces of information are in this extra backup Galera info file. So you just need to copy them over to grsstate.dot. What this does is that when you restart this node, it will uh, catch up with the rest of the cluster using IST rather than SST. So uh, the node donor node will be involved in uh, the heavy lifting of uh, shipping uh, snapshots. Instead, uh, you're using the, the backup that you have taken. Restoring the entire cluster is, uh, is even more complicated. I guess it will happen in even more stressful situations. 
uh, the first and foremost thing to note is that if your cluster is completely down, uh, when you restore it, uh, when you restart it, uh, you essentially create a new cluster from scratch. So the old cluster is essentially gone, logically speaking, and what you do is uh, start a new cluster using the same data. The easiest approach here is store your data on one of the nodes and, and start it with reset new cluster. And then you start one more node, which does SSD with the first one, and then you restart two more nodes and so forth. Uh, what happens in this case is that uh, the first node that you have started is, uh, is donating uh, SSD to the second node. And then those two nodes together are donating SSD to the third and fourth node that you're starting, and so on. So essentially, uh, you will either have no service, or uh, it will be degraded while this operation takes place. So uh, the total time to recover your functionality will depend on how fast uh, this procedure will be able to complete. So it is a good idea to practice and measure it. There is another option that is uh, slightly faster. Uh, it involves restoring uh, the backup on the first node and starting a one node cluster as before. But now you need to prevent transactions from being issued against that node. Uh, this will allow you to restore the backup on the other nodes. And if you create a GRS state that the file on them using this template, then uh, all the nodes will be able to join and form a single cluster without any SSD. The key here is that the first node that you have started uh, should not uh, be allowed to have any transactions against it uh, until uh, the other nodes have, uh, have uh, been able to join using that method. So again, you have uh, this uh, downtime, but uh, maybe this procedure will be faster for you. And our final topic for today is uh, uh, state snapshot transfers, in particular, how to uh, select the uh, SST method and uh, the differences, uh, the practical differences between the, the methods uh, that, uh, that are available. Uh, so first, some general principles. Uh, it is always best to avoid SSD altogether. So if you have uh, a large enough GCash size, uh, then SSDs will be much less frequent. They will only happen in truly emergency situations. The default for GCash uh, size is 128 megabytes, uh, meaning that uh, a node is able to leave the cluster and uh, rejoin with IST if no more than 128 megabytes worth of updates, so worth of transactions, have happened on the cluster as a well. whole. Uh, so depending on how active your cluster is, so this may be uh, a long time or a very short time to, to, to go through those 128 megabytes. Uh, if you have sufficient memory, if you have uh, memory into the dozens of uh, gigabytes, uh, then it is um, reasonable to set GPS size to say one gigabyte or two gigabytes. Uh, and also a method uh, that we'll discuss uh, hopefully in a later webinar is available to scientific cal scientifically calculate the appropriate amount, uh, amount of GPS size for your particular workload. SSD uh, is also determined by whether you want to uh, keep uh, a dedicated donating node around to, to serve SSDs. And here by dedicated, I mean not a node that is just sitting uh, waiting for SSDs to SSD requests to arrive, but more a node that you're willing to take out of your load balancer so that it performs this operation. Some SST methods are blocking for the donor node, and some are not. So if you are able to take uh, one of one node from your load balancer and uh, serve uh, and use it to serve uh, SST, that uh, that gives you some operational flexibility. 
also it is important to note that uh, SST encryption is configured separately from the encryption of the rest of the Galera traffic. And uh, this configuration is specific for each uh, SST method. So if encryption is important for you, make sure that uh, it is enabled for the SST as well and not just for the rest of the Galera replication traffic. And the SSDs differ in their bandwidth uh, consumption. Uh, for some methods, it is possible to use compression. Uh, and uh, MySQL DOM, for example, is uh, a logical uh, transfer method, meaning that rather than take your uh, data directory and ship it over to the other node, it actually takes uh, your individual roles and uh, ships them over. So depending on uh, how your database is indexed and uh, how many files you have accumulated in your data directory, uh, maybe MySQL DOM uh, would be uh, would be a surprisingly faster method for you to use, depending on the circumstances. So uh, a few words about the specific uh, rsync methods and uh, what is important to know about them. Uh, rsync uh, causes, as we mentioned, the donor to block uh, new transactions. So ideally, you should not have your clients sending uh, requests uh, to, uh, to a node that is uh, donating uh, rsync SST. A status variable is available, as we mentioned, that will tell you if a node is now uh, donating. So you can use this variable to uh, remove this node from your uh, load balancer or redirect your clients elsewhere. Uh, with extra backup, the donor remains operational, but again, uh, IO is involved in actually writing those uh, backup files, so it is not uh, it is not a free operation by any means. And finally, as we mentioned, MySQL dump operates on an uh, entirely different method. So for some specific uh, databases, uh, it can turn out to be uh, a, a good choice uh, for for SSD, surprisingly. Uh, we will now discuss uh, two different uh, setups. Uh, so uh, if uh, you are unable to dedicate a specific node uh, to SSD, then essentially your, op your only option is uh, extra backup v2 because it is non-blocking. Uh, you will have to uh, install those uh, separate extra backup uh, binaries and packages. Uh, and uh, encryption and compression are, are available for this SST method. So uh, overall a good choice. It may require uh, this additional installation, but uh, 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 you should give it a try. You should uh, also actually force the uh, SST to happen as after you have configured it. If there are any, any errors, they will be shown in the error log so that you see them uh, immediately when you configure it rather than uh, when it is actually used in production. If uh, you are able to use a dedicated donor, meaning that you are able to remove the donor from your loader, rsync uh, is uh, the simplest and uh, often the fastest method available. It just performs a straight copy from one machine to the other of those files and uh, compression and uh, uh, differential file transfers are available. And so uh, we should benchmark and see how fast it is compared to extra backup. And uh, using this recep SSC donor variable, you can specify that uh, this particular node is the preferred donor or the exclusive donor for the cluster. And uh, in case you currently have an arbitrator node, then uh, if you switch it to a full Galera node, which in turn requires the disk space for it, and um, it should be as performant as the other nodes, then it is the node that can serve as a donor. Okay, those were the topics for this webinar. Apologies uh, for the very win, uh, long explanations, uh, but uh, we do have uh, quite a lot of uh, topics coming up in future webinars as well.
Uh, you're welcome to ask questions using the question box uh, on your screen. There may be an orange arrow that you need to click to see it. And we are also welcome uh, for ideas about uh, future webinars that you want to, to hear from us. Uh, other things that, uh, that uh, you want to discuss, uh, uh, specific features and Galera or specific uh, issues that you may be having. So uh, we will now take questions, answer them. Okay, here is a good one. What are the known issues and limitations uh, in using the cluster for multi-region active active setup? Uh, we do have a lot of customers that use this. Uh, surprisingly, we have customers that use it uh, across data centers, across uh, countries even. What happens there is that the limiting factor for the performance of your cluster is uh, essentially your latency uh, or the speed of light in most cases. Uh, so uh, you will see that uh, when you commit a transaction, it needs to be replicated in real time to all the other regions. And therefore, if those regions are far away, then uh, you will see this is a latency delay on uh, your commit. If uh, the regions are actually close to each other, like in uh, uh, the case where they are more like availability zones rather than uh, than truly geographically separated uh, data centers, uh, then uh, if the latency is good, your performance will also be good. In this case, uh, it will probably be more of a manner, matter about how you configure the network. If you have network address translation mandated by your uh, cloud provider, Galera provides a set of options so that will allow it to work uh, through network address translation it will allow it to work with public and private uh, IP addresses and uh, all of that uh, stuff. Next question. What is the best way to stop a node with a full disk from crashing the cluster? Uh, that's a very good question. We have actually had people ask about that in the past. Uh, uh, what happens is that uh, the full disk condition is actually detected by uh, by MySQL and not by Galera. So it depends on uh, the way MySQL handles it. If MySQL decides to exit uh, because uh, it is out of disk space, we expect that the rest of the nodes will continue to run. If uh, this is not what we have observed, then please file a bug read. But the other thing that we have seen is that uh, uh, MySQL will decide to actually hang and wait for this space to become available. In this particular case, uh, the other nodes will also hang and wait for this node to be unlocked. Uh, right now, the solution for this is to monitor the nodes, to monitor their responsiveness. And if you see uh, that the node is in this state, uh, you should kill the MySQL process right away. Once the process is queued, the other nodes will detect that uh, this is a failure of the node and will continue to operate uh, and process transactions. Uh, but you're right, this is kind of a gray area. The best way is to, to have also monitoring on your disk usage to avoid even going there. Okay. I think uh, we are done with the questions. Uh, let's give it another minute in case uh, come up. Uh, if uh, we are unable to answer your questions in this webinar, please feel free to email us. Here is our email address, the email address of our mailing list, and also uh, our website where you can find uh, our downloads. We provide packages for different Linux distributions. The source code itself is on GitHub. Uh, it's uh, fully open source. So uh, uh, thank you very much for using Galera. If you're not yet using it, uh, please give it a try. A lot of people have uh, 
are betting their money on it, I mean it is being used in various financial applications, online gaming, uh, important uh, databases are being uh, managed by Galera. It is a very robust uh, product uh, that, uh, that works well in a uh, lot of scenarios. Okay, thank you everyone and uh, have a good day.